Shalom. Welcome to the Messianic Hour with Rabbi Scott Sekulow. The Messianic Hour is a program designed to give you insight into the Jewish roots of your faith. Rabbi Scott is also here to answer your questions and help you gain a deeper understanding of Bible prophecy. And now, here's your host, Rabbi Scott Sekulow. Shalom and welcome to the Messianic Hour. I'm your host, Rabbi Scott. This show is dedicated to reaching the lost and educating the found. I'm here with my wife, Judy, as we bring you a perspective from a Jewish standpoint on the scripture. We have a great show in store for you. In fact, we have a little different show in store. We're going to be interviewing David Dolan. He is a uh, reporter in Israel, and he's going to be telling us a lot of information on what's going on there, the situation with Syria, uh, situations here in the United States. I've known uh, David for over 20 years, and he is just a wealth of knowledge, and I cannot wait to have him uh, on the show. we got a lot of great information to talk about. And, Judy, we got a lot of things coming up over the next couple of weeks here at the, con- or months, I should say, here at the congregation. We do. On the 19th of August, we have Reuven Prager coming. He's going to be talking. He's an Orthodox man, not a believer, but he's going to be talking about the efforts to rebuild the Third Temple, right. something you do not want to miss. This is open to everyone. Um, we in- encourage you to come. It's on a Sunday night at 7 o'clock at Congregation Beth Adonai in Tucker, Georgia. We'll also be live streaming it if you're not in the area, but something you really, really don't want to miss and something that doesn't you know, get a lot of notice, doesn't get a lot of publicity, but something that's definitely a movement and definitely going on in Israel that you want to be a part of. Right. Now, Judy, we should warn them he has a very heavy Jew- New York <laughs> Jewish accent. He speaks perfect English. He was uh, born, I think, in Miami, so he's uh, very easy to understand. He uh, has been living in uh, Israel for over 20 years, I think. Uh, a very uh, good friend of ours. Uh, uh, he is a traditional Jew. He's not Messianic, uh, and so he brings a very unique uh, standpoint to it. You're really going to want to hear this. Uh, we've had him, we have him here every year. He's where I get my tunics from, and uh, so I really want you to check that out as well. And then, Judy, we're right around the corner from the High Holy Days. Yes, we are. And we're so, less about six weeks away now. Right. So if you're looking to uh, for a place to worship for the High Holy Days, be it Jew or Gentile, these holidays are for you. We want you to come join us at Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Um, and those dates are on our calendar. Uh, Air of Rosh Hashanah is Sunday night, September 16th. The day service is on the 17th. And then our Kol Nidre service is on the 25th. And then Yom Kippur is the 26th and the 27th of the month. So you want to uh, get information on that. Go to our website at rabbiscott.com and link over to Beth Adonai. Check that out. We have great information there. And no ticket is required. Now, for a Gentile, you might not understand that. That means it's free and everyone's invited. So come check that out. Remember, we are a listener-supported show. If you want to support our ministry, you can go to our website at rabbiscott.com. Also, while you're there, sign up for our free newsletter. You get a free book, I Have a Friend Who's Jewish to You, and the Prophecy Card, just for signing up. And they can find us on Facebook and join the group. That's right, and YouTube. So check that out. If you want to see what we look like, go check out our YouTube site at The Messianic Hour. Stay tuned. We'll be back with David Dolan right after this. Welcome back to the Messianic Hour. I'm your host, Rabbi Scott. The show is dedicated to reaching the lost and educating the found. I want to encourage you to go to our website, rabbiscott.com, as we look at what is going on around the world, uh, especially in Israel. You can get great information there on our website and keep you informed while you're there. Sign up for our newsletter. You can also plant a tree in Israel for a uh, donation. You get a beautiful certificate, and we donate a, uh, we plant a tree in Israel on your behalf. So go check that out at RabbiScott.com. But right now, we have a special guest on the line with us. David Dolan lives in Jerusalem, is a uh, broadcast reporter, journalist, uh, popular speaker, and author, and dear friend. And uh, I've known David now for probably almost 20 years, which is amazing because I think we're both only 22 years old. So uh, we've known you for a long time. And uh, David, it's great to have you on the show. That's good to be on, young man. <laughs> uh, David, you know, I remember you, when I first became a believer, you had come to speak at a congregation we were at, and I will still never forget one of the stories you told about that you were in 
uh, you were, I think you were driving and a uh, missile was coming towards your um, car. Why don't you tell us about that real quick? Yeah, Rabbi Scott, that was um, at, at the very, very beginning of the first Lebanon War, so that means I'm not <laughs> 22. <laughs> I'm a little bit older than that, but that was 1982. Um, actually, last month, um, um, that would have been 30 years ago last month, and I was driving from um, a kibbutz that I was then living on uh, in the Jezreel Valley, uh, the Valley of Megiddo, Armageddon, uh, going, I was attending a Hebrew um, school there, language school, and, but also working uh, at the Voice of Hope, um, uh, a Christian radio station in South Lebanon. And um, they had called me in early, a day early, because we all knew that war was pending. Uh, the Israeli ambassador to London had just been assassinated uh, by a Palestinian group, and everybody expected that uh, Menachem Begin, then Prime Minister, and Ariel Sharon, Defense Minister, would order a major Israeli response in South Lebanon, which is, is of course, what happened. But um, before the actual war began, uh, Hezbollah, um, not Hezbollah, the PLO, which was then stationed in South Lebanon, uh, began firing rockets into northern Israel. Well, they did this frequently, and I'd already experienced that the year before in a kibbutz in the north on the border. But um, this came out of the blue, and uh, one of those rockets landed um, very, very close to where I was. One actually killed the very first Israeli victim of that war, was a man driving along the same road that I was on. Uh, it hit the shoulder of the road, and uh, shrapnel hit him and killed him. Well, I drove up to, um, actually, I was on a bus. Uh, th I haven't told the story in a while, so I have to refresh my own memory. I was on a public bus, and the bus driver said, hey, um, the rockets are falling. Where exactly do you need to go? I'll drop you off right in front. I was like the last person on there up in Matula, the town of Matula, right on the border with Lebanon. I told him the house I was going to, which was the manager at the Voice of Hope, and he let me off in front. And as he did, a rocket about uh, three seconds later fell on the bus station, which was just about 50 feet away. And had we continued, as he would have normally done, to the bus stop, the formal bus stop, we would have been hit by that rocket. So uh, his kindness in letting me off a little bit before the stop, uh, you know, so I could get in real quickly since rockets were falling, uh, saved his life and my life, no doubt. Wow. Well, you know, a similar situation now. We, we, we fast forward 30 years. We have a bus now uh, and get blown up and... Bibi Netanyahu now is saying we're going to retaliate, that Hezbollah and Iran's behind it. Tell us what you know about the situation. What's your viewpoint on it? Well, let me just first say that I was uh, out in Greece for a short vacation at a, a Messianic friend's home uh, on a Greek island and was just coming back to Israel, passing in Ben Gurion Airport as those people that were later killed and, and wounded were preparing to leave for their vacation just north of Greece in Bulgaria. So I looked down, as you know, when you go in, you, there's big windows. You can see all the people assembled below that are about to depart, uh, having coffee or whatever. And I looked down at that crowd, and I'm sure that I saw some of those people uh, who left about an hour and a half later. Uh, terrible attack. Um, you know, it's just much easier for terrorists to act outside of Israel now. Of course, they blew up dozens of buses between 2000 and 2004, the last attack just a block from my home in central Jerusalem. Uh, but now with the security barrier, not complete, but fairly complete, it's very difficult for them to get into Israel proper to carry out attacks. And, uh, and of course, this is not being pinned anyway on Hamas or the Palestinians, but on Hezbollah and Iran. And they have agents around the world. They've carried out uh, attacks in South America and Thailand and India last February, where they killed the wife of, um, of uh, the Israeli attache there, the embassy. So uh, we're pretty sure that it was them again. And it's, you know, a group of Israelis uh, chartering a plane. You have on the board in this, um, this resort coastal town in Bulgaria that this is, jet is coming in from Tel Aviv. So it's very easy to case these uh, places, and security's not very tight. There's no Israeli security per se, 
and uh, to target uh, people. So the Israeli tourists are being told to be extremely careful and vigilant. And, and I can tell you that a number of uh, people I know have actually canceled uh, trips uh, that they were planning uh, later this summer because of these advisories, especially not to go to India, to South Africa, and uh, to Greece, uh, Bulgaria, of course, and some of these right. other countries where they have information that uh, Hezbollah is operating. And we do have in custody in Cyprus uh, a young Swedish citizen, but he's of Lebanese descent, and he has confessed to the police there and to Israeli security that are working with them on the island of Cyprus that other attacks, he was planning an attack in Cyprus against Israeli tourists in Limassol, and other agents are out there, Hezbollah agents, Iranian agents, preparing for the same. And this one was done actually on the anniversary of the bombing in Argentina in 1990, I think 1994, um, at the, the synagogue that they bombed. I was there in 98. We did our, our festival uh, of music and dance in Rosario, Argentina. And, and I remember that was a big deal because of the fact that we were showing our Jewish identity. Many people had not done that for a, a period of time. Now, David, what are you hearing uh, through your report? You know, you're a, a broadcast journalist. What are you hearing? How is Israel going to respond to this? What, what do you feel is going to happen? Well, um, first of all, Prime Minister Netanyahu said there would be a response. Um, uh, and again, it's not because some people say, oh, there, there they go again, eye for an eye. Well, that's not the idea. The idea is to you know, uh, try to prevent future attacks by telling the terror groups they're going to pay a price. You know, they, they can't just do this with impunity. They will there will be a blowback to their attacks, and that's designed to prevent further attacks. Um, Defense Minister Ehud Barak uh, was more specific, saying that Hezbollah is the target. It's behind it all, but of course they can't hit Iran unless they hit Iran, and that, of course, is possible at any time as well, but that would be against its nuclear program. That would be a massive operation. But uh, uh, anything Hezbollah does out of the uh, ordinary will be uh, punished. And, and it's not just punishment. Uh, we've had reports now for several months that Hezbollah is planning to transfer out of Syria uh, some Scud missiles that they purchased from with Iranian money years ago. Uh, they have smuggled a few of them across the border into Lebanon, disassembled. But the Israelis have said, the Israeli government has said, Barak said last Friday, uh, gave three interviews uh, to all three Israeli television channels, very unusual, on Friday evening, saying that Israel will interdict any such operation, will not allow it to take place. And this, of course, would probably be responded to by Hezbollah with an attack on Israel, and we would potentially have another a full war, or at least something as large as in 2006, but probably greater because Hezbollah has a lot more rockets now than they did then, and they've told us. Uh, Nasrallah, their leader, and others, that they can now hit all of Israel. So they have more sophisticated rockets, more advanced rockets, courtesy of Iran and Syria. And, of course, um, uh, Syria is falling apart. And uh, uh, Barack also said that Israel will not allow their chemical stockpile, one of the largest on Earth, to fall into uh, either al-Qaeda hands or Hezbollah hands or anybody else's. And he said, we're preparing a military operation to potentially halt this, so the region is really on edge right now. I want to. We're going to hold on that thought because I want to come back after our break and talk more about what's going on in Syria and in Egypt. And then you also have a new book out called "The Millennium: The Lord Reigns," and so we want to let people know about that as well. You can get more information about David uh, Dolan at his website, D Dolan. That's D two D's O L. A-N.com, David, ddolan.com. Check that out. It's on our website as well. When we get back, we're going to be talking about what's going on in Syria and in Egypt. Stay tuned. You're listening to the Messianic Hour. I want to encourage you, again, go to our website, rabbiscott.com. While you're there, let's bless Israel by planting trees in Israel to show our support. Many of the trees uh, during the last war were destroyed, and Israel needs to replant those trees. So go check that out. We'll be back right after this.